Hi everyone, welcome to the community classroom. We're going to be talking about Nimrod, the mighty predator. We're also going to be looking at some etymology and symbology dynamics that tie themes related to little Nas X to themes related to Nimrod. Now this is going to be somewhat of a Freudian analysis. So we're going to be looking at uh, not only etymology and symbology, but again, some of those unconscious kinds of dynamics that go along with both etymology and symbology. And so it's important to start off with this name Nimrod as people understand the name Nimrod. Now it's not clear exactly who this Nimrod character was in totality um, in terms of mythology or just in regular human existence. But um, what we do know about this idea of Nimrod is that the name is attached to being a mighty hunter. Not only a mighty hunter, but an apex hunter. And what's also important is what does a hunter mean? And so when you look at this word hunter and what it means to be a hunter, you are thinking about concepts such as uh, chasing. Hunting is about pursuing and seizure and killing and slaying and robbing and pillaging and raping and plundering. And a predator is also a thief, a raider and a marauder. Now, this is important because when you look at the the base of the word Nimrod, um, you see a number of dynamics going on there with these different letters that are attached in terms of etymology to a number of words that do trace back to this. And so some of the most important letters in Nimrod are the consonants. And so you have the NMR and there are all sorts of etymologies attached to that. And then NM and MR and then M and then R and D. We're going to quickly look at some of the understandings of the word Nimrod across a number of ancient languages. And uh, this comes from John Morris's book, uh, The New Nation in 1880. And very quickly, you see that the author is demonstrating all of these words that are connected to Nimrod, that root. Um, and you see that the words N-I-M-R and N-E-B-R, as in Nebraska, and N-E-B-R-O-D are all related to Nimrod. And also the author offers that there is an argument that uh, there's a probability that Nimrod is a disguised Semitic plural. This author is really dedicated to vindicating the name of Ham and the descendants of Ham. So this is a little discussion about uh, more about the history of Nimrod. And you see the different transliterations here. You see with the N-M-R-D, the N-A-M-R-U-D, that Namarud. And so you can see how that definitely uh, relates to Nimrod. And you can see how there is a connection between uh, that name, Nimrod, and the name associated with Yoruba, which is the Lamarudu and Namarudu. You also see an interesting uh, translation in the Portuguese, Namaradu, uh, meaning in love, a lover, a wooer. This gets a little deeper when you start looking at all of these different uh, translations uh, related to Nimrod. And you see in the Arabic a number of translations. Uh, what's interesting is you see uh, notations about being spotted like a pard. That's a leopard. Also, this idea of being cloaked. So you see that in the Arabic. You also see a variety of spellings here. So you need to look out for that. So when you're looking at Nimrod or you're looking at constructs of Nimrod, um, you will see that there are all sorts of variations in terms of the way that this word is translated in different languages. And this name, Nimrod, uh, also is translated as Namer or Namer, and that translates to leopard in a number of languages. And a leopard, as you know, is a big cat predator. You can see in Persian that variations of this word involve the idea of being concealed and covered and hidden and secret. And if you recall our translations of Africa, a fair, uh, that is also related to all of those constructs. 
And here you can see in Strong's Concordance, uh, Namir, Namir uh, is a leopard. And this again is related to Nimrod. And you see the Nimrod uh, over on the right hand side. Moving on with this Nimra, you also see that uh, this name in and of itself means place of leopard, a place east of the Jordan. And even more interestingly, you have that Nimra, Nimrim, uh, Namir is uh, a place in Moab. And here we are revisiting that etymology that we looked at before when we were looking at the relationship between the Yoruba and Nimrod. I mean, you see that word Nazi, Nazi, N-A-Z-I, and we're going to look at how that ties this etymology, this whole construct of Nimrod, to the etymology of Nas. And here you see the variations of that word Nazi, and it's related to the word Nazir, which is also related to Nazarite, by the way. And it means one who is consecrated or one who is devoted. And so Naz is just a shortened version of Nazir, Nazi, shortened version of Nazir. So we're going to move back to that word leopard that is also a part of the root of this understanding, uh, this predacious understanding, this name Nimrod meaning predator, an apex predator, in fact. And you see that uh, a leopard is a predator, it's a particular type of predator. Um, but uh, leopards are primarily found in Africa and Asia. And here you see this depiction of these two big cats, basically. Now, on the right-hand side, you see the Black Panther. That's supposed to be the big cat. Um, and the Black Panther um, is a big cat that is primarily found in the East. And then you have on the left-hand side, that which is supposed to be the Golden Jaguar, which is interesting because the Golden Jaguar is primarily uh, a predator that is found in the Americas. Now, the movie The Black Panther can be understood as a tribute to Nimrod. Uh, and you see a number of tributes to Nimrod all over the world in terms of naming dynamics. And you also see the representations of this word in the etymologies of so many words and so many place names and so many people. Um, but when you consider the original meaning of this name being a predator, a pillager, uh, someone who would be going around being a colonizer, the ultimate apex colonizer. Uh, so that's what you have with Nimrod, that, that construct. And so you also have uh, something that's very interesting related to this name, and it's related to lemurs. And um, there was also a land that, a mythological land, some people believe it's real, um, Lemuria. And again, this is another one of those tributes to Nimrod in that name. And so sort of being named after Nimrod. There are a number of places named after Nimrod uh, when you start to think about it. And a number of people who are referring to themselves as being that of Nimrod uh, simply by calling themselves in terms of ethnicity by that name, by part of the root of that name. And this is an image of the Lemur, when you think about Lemuria. Uh, what's interesting about Lemur or Lemures is that this is also related to uh, Roman religion and it's related to ghosts and um, also known as Lemuria. So the rituals that were performed in order to eradicate the ghost uh, which would haunt their living relatives. Uh, that whole process was known as Lemuria. So it's interesting that there's also this supposed landmass uh, named for this. And we're going to leave with some food for thought. Uh, another translation of this word larva related to Lemuria, Lemur, uh, is the Latin meaning mask. Remember, knowledge is power. Take care. See you soon.